Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Epic Gangster Tales. Today we got a quick little episode we're going to do, but I think it's going to be a very interesting one. Um, you know, we took a week off last week with Christmas and everything. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Um, we're going to do a quick little New Year's Eve, um, you know, quick little video on how the Gemini twins switched from Roy DeMeo and the Gambino crime family over to Vic and Gaspipe in the Lucchese crime family. Ultimately ended up doing hits for them. Um, but I think it's a, it's a crazy little story. And uh, I wanted to do an episode this week here regardless, even with the holidays and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get into that. Um, so yeah, today's episode is going to be on two of the most violent and prolific hitmen slash mobsters that the Mafia has ever known. The feared Gemini twins, that being Joey Testa and Anthony Center from the feared, very feared, historic DeMeo crew in the Gambino crime family. You know, um, it's a it's a treacherous tale. Castellano, after being very frustrated with DeMeo and the, the you know, they were prolific. If you've ever read Murder Machine, it's a great book. Great, great book. Probably my favorite mob book of all time. And it's brutal. Um, you know, and ultimately Castellano gets tired of all the inanimate killing that DeMeo and his crew were doing. Um, it was just too hot. You had the commission, commission trial coming up, breathing down Castellano's neck. Then this other huge Rico thing with the DeMeo crew and the car stealing stuff, you know, that, they, you know, they were plugged in from here to from Brooklyn to Kuwait with that stuff, making hundreds of thousands of dollars stealing cars and shipping them to Iraq and Kuwait and stuff, you know, but all the money in the world couldn't save him. Once Castellano felt he was a liability and, and didn't know if he'd be able to stand up, um, you know, he, he had to get rid of him. So Paul Castellano goes to Frankie DeChico, right? And Frankie DeChico's like, okay, let me look into it. Frankie DeChico goes over and, um, you know, he, he first the Chico goes in and sees John Gotti and go over at the Bergen Hunt and Fish um, Social Club, you know, and uh, <laughs> you know they they want the Chico's like I need you to, I need you guys to knock off DeMeo. I need you guys. You guys are one of the most you know feared crews in the Gambino crime family. I'm sure he didn't say it like that, but you know what I mean. He's like John. I need you. I need you to take these guys out. I need you to take Roy out. And John himself, John Gotti's like, no, he's a nutball, and he's got a hundred million thousand killers, young killers underneath him. I'm all set. This is Paul's problem, not mine. You know what I mean? So that doesn't work. The Gotti crew adamantly declined um, the DeMeo contract. Nobody wanted that. Nobody wanted to go kill Michael Myers himself. You know what I mean? That motherfucker might pop back up, come get your ass, or, or some devout follower or something. You know, the DeMeo crew was almost like a cult, man. It really was. You know what I mean? Like, if you read that book, it's a crew full of serial killers. Put it that way. All right? I mean, they butcher people in this book. I'm not going to get into it on here. I'm trying to get monetized sometime this century. You know? Um, but, yeah, nobody wanted that. John Gotti included. Nobody wanted that contract. Right? So... The Chico channeled his inner mafia GM skills, you know what I mean? He's out here making deals. So Gotti don't want it. And um, Frankie DeChico goes over to our fellow Brooklyn mobster, Gaspipe Castle, of the Lucchese crime family. And, um, you know, brings him into the fold. And DeChico and Gaspipe approach the Gemini twins. Anthony Center and Joey Testa who uh, Gaspipe had some type of connection. They're all Brooklyn guys. So DeChico and, and Casso approached them and essentially were like, look, nobody wants to do this. You guys are fan hitters. You know his schedule. You know his routines. We need you to whack out Roy. It's got to happen. He's got to go. He's going here regardless. You know, you guys are up and coming stars in the Gambino crime family, but we got a lot of going on right now. It just ain't going to work out like that. So if you take out Roy for us, Anthony here, he's, you know, the Chico's talking about Castle, is going to take you under his wing, take you over to the Lucchese crime family, and you guys will get made and, and be over there under Vic and Gas, you know, and, and you, you know, who knows the levels you'll rise to, but you got to take out Roy. Roy's got to go. Roy the male. So the Gemini twins are like, okay, they learn to a garage. Uh, Might have been Joey Testa's brother's garage, Patty Testa. 
they lure him in there, you know, do to him what they did to so many others, sneak attack, you know, bang, bang, and DeMeo was dead before he knew it. Um, so then Testa and, um, and Center take DeMeo, stuff him in the, the trunk of his own car, his Cadillac, drive it out to some, you know, deserted place in Brooklyn, park it, and that's where, you know, the, the iconic picture of DeMeo frozen solid in his own trunk, dead, you know, the boogeyman himself, dead. Um, and, you know, everybody kept their word in that agreement. They were transferred over from the Gambino crime family. They were only associates. They weren't made under Roy, you know, but I'm, I'm telling you, if you read that book, I'm telling you, Center and Testa, individual stats, I mean, Christ. It has to look something like seven and eight. One's got seven kills, the other's got eight kills. You know, uh, not to mention all the other people they just shot, who knows. They, they murdered a lot of people. These are violent, violent guys. Um, so then they go over to the Lucchese crime family, right? This is, they killed DeMeo in 83. Um, you know, and they have to ride out that center and all them go to court for that stuff. You know, Paul Castellano gets assassinated. You gotta figure a lot of things happen in those years. You know, the early to mid 80s, a lot happens. Um, 83, uh, you know, Frank DeChico and, and Gas Pipe get the Gemini twins to kill their boss, um, Roy DeMeo. And um, ultimately, and as a reward for that, they switch over to Luc Lucchese crime family. And uh, Vic and Gas waste no time in putting the Gemini twins to work. You know, um, 1986, there was an incident where, um, you know, Castle's guy in the gas tax scam, right? Every they say forensics started that the gas, you know, the gas tax scam, and it was, you know, hundreds of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, almost trillions of dollars. These guys are printing money off that, off that, uh, that racket. You know what I mean? And um, Bella Gula was uh, Castle's guy. He was a Russian guy. The Russian mobsters were heavily entwined in that. Every family had their guy for the gas tax scam. You know what I mean? wasn't just exclusively Francis and the Colombo family. Everybody, every family had their claws into the, the gas tax scam. It was that lucrative. And uh, their guy, Bella Gula, started getting pressured, right, by this other guy, uh, Reznikov, Vladimir Reznikov. This guy, he's like, you know, the Russian Terminator himself. If you read some of these books, he was friggin', you know, a monster, uh, Reznikov. Everybody was shitting in their pants. Every, every Russian in Brighton Beach was shitting in their pants when this guy walked by, right? Just a serious dude. He go he goes into Bella Gula's office. He's like, I want $600,000, you know, or I'll kill everybody you ever known. I'll kill your family. I'll kill you, you know. These Russians don't play. And Bella Gula kind of like, you know, was like, okay, but was hesitant. This man let off with the AK in his office in a Brighton Beach, you know, it's like an office setting. Vladimir Reznikov lets off on Castle's guy, right? And, is, you know, hits some girl in her arm in the back. Like, you know, if you did that these days, you know, Jesus Christ, uh, you know, every terrorist agency from here to China, you know, would jump on you. But this is back in the early 80s, um, you know, and, and, and Reznikov lets off with the AK-47 in the office building, show he's not playing, hits a lady in the arm. Friggin' Bella Gula, right? The castle's main guy with the, the Russian mob has a heart attack. He's so shook and scared of this man, Reznikov. He has a heart attack in his office building, right? So Castle's like, what the fuck? You know, um, you know, they're like, you got to get this in order. You got to fix this. Vic's like, you got to go, you know, fix this situation with Bella Gula. And he's like, okay. So Castle goes, talks with him. Bella Gula's like, no, oh, you know, this guy, he's the freaking Russian boogeyman. You know, you know. And uh, Castle keeping it cool, calm, and collective. You know what I mean? Back when Castle was somewhat honorable. And I uh, was like, okay, don't worry about it. You got a picture of this guy? Let me get a picture of this guy. What's he look like? And, uh, you know, I want you... And, and he does. Gives Castle a picture. And uh, he's like, you know, okay, I want you to tell him to meet you at your office tomorrow. You're going to pay him. You got the money. You're going to give it to him. Uh, have him come here. Don't be inside. Don't have the money. Let him come in. He'll be all mad think it's an inconvenience, go to leave, and the rest will take care of, don't worry. And he's nervous, he's, you know, terrified of this guy, Castle, not really that scared. And, uh, so yeah, so he goes, and he, and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna try out our, our new guys, the, 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 <laughs> the most unrookie rookies in the day, in, you know, the history of the mafia. 
so he goes to the Gemini twins, right? They're working on getting their button. They're officially under the Lucchese flag, but they're trying to get that button. It's like 86. So he goes to them, gives them the drop. They go wait in the, the parking lot of Bella Gula's establishment, and everything goes according to plan. Nutball, Reznikov goes in, has a mental fit again, comes out to his car, pissed, not thinking, as he's fumbling for his keys. You know, Anthony Center had crept the car up silently. Excuse me, um, a, a, a ninja status. Joey Testa hops out of the car quietly, taking big, big, fast strides up. And before he can even get into his car, Reznikov, or see what happened, or know what happened, Joey Testa had raised up a 40 caliber, 40 caliber Smith & Wesson handgun and put four in the back of his head. And as he fell into his car, he unloaded the rest of the clip into his back. And uh, Bella Gula's Russian Terminator problem was eviscerated. Lucchese's gas tax scam was back in full swing and everybody was making money again. And, and, and the Gemini twins, you know, shined like a diamond on that hit. You know, the Russian boogeyman himself, and they put him down right there, broad daylight in a Brooklyn parking lot, um, and proved the message. You put the mad dog down like that, it sends a big message. But Castle was not done with them. Um, there was one more, one more brutal hit, and it's a terrible one. I almost didn't even want to get into it. It's so uh, disgusting. But you know, this is epic gangster tales, so we're gonna we're gonna get into it. Um, one of the last hits they did for Casso before ultimately getting locked up in 1989 was another 1986 homicide that was brutal. Um, Anthony Ga Anthony Cas Gaspipe Casso was the victim of a failed assassination attempt back in 1986. So, you know, he was still seething about this, wanted everybody involved to die. He got most of the people, you know, I'm not gonna get into, you know, where he tortured the other guy and, and you know, he, he got his revenge, so to say. But there was a guy named Nicky Guido who had eluded him up until that point, couldn't find him, knew he had something to do with the hit had his crooked cops, the Mafia cops, look into it. This is ultimately what got the Mafia cops caught, you know, and that's a whole other story in itself. Um, you know, they looked up Nicky Guido in the system and found him, got the address, gave the address to Casso, right? So on Christmas Day, 1986, Casso sends Joey Testa, Anthony Center, and I believe George Sapola to go take care of Nicky Guido. And they do, they go post up outside his house and on Christmas morning, oh, Christmas morning, 1986, they pull up, um, Nicky Guido, who's a young man in his 20s, was showing his uncle his Christmas gift, the new car, showing him the system, they're in this car, showing each other. And uh, as he's showing him his new car, uh, a, a silent, deadly Joey Testa would creep up and ultimately reach in through the driver's side window, shooting through the glass, and hitting Guido in his head, neck, and body multiple times, killing him on the spot. Uh, the uncle was unharmed, but Nicky Guido was no more. And the, the truly tragic thing besides this being on Christmas morning, Christmas day morning, 1986, um, it was not even the right guy, it was the wrong target. It was the right name, Nicky Guido was the right name, but it was the wrong Nicky Guido, a different, Brooklyn's a big place, there was another Nicky Guido that was actually in jail at the time. Um, it was the wrong guy, just an innocent, a working man, um, you know, not a gangster, nothing, just showing off his Christmas Day present and got popped by the Lucchese crime family, Joey Testa specifically, um, you know, on bad info from the Mafia cops and, and Castle's sources and stuff. Just a disgusting, disgusting, um, you know, uh, something that should have never happened if you ask me, you know what I mean? Um, just dirty, you know? But that's ultimately the tale of how the Gemini twins, the feared, famed Gemini twins, switched over from Roy DeMeo and the Gambino crime family over to the Lucchese crime family and how Gaspipe Castle immediately put them to work. In 1989, as you well know, it's well documented in the news and stuff like that, the Gemini twins would go to prison. Um, they both would get life sentences for all those murders with the DeMeo crew and I think uh, probably some stuff with the Lucchese crime family as well. Um, in 1988, you know, before I forget, they actually did receive their buttons. Um, 
Anthony Center, Joey Testa, and Al Diaco's son, Joseph Diaco, received their buttons in a ceremony in 1988. Ultimately, in 1989, the FBI would close in and, you know, the Gemini twins would receive their life sentence. Um, 2023, interestingly enough, Anthony Center, who is, uh, if, if Tester, if Tester is, uh, Freddy Krueger, Anthony Center is Jason, you know what I mean? So, Anthony Center got out, released, 2023. Who knows, you know what I mean? Good for him. He should be released. I think after a lot of time, certain individuals should be released. Um... And Joey Testa as well. They say he has a good chance of being released. I know these guys have done wrong. And some people may not agree with me. But I feel like they've done damn near almost 40 years in prison. Let him out if it's possible. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, I thought this was an interesting tale. Um, you know, and, and there's not a lot of info out there on Frankie DeChico and stuff like that. And how this and how that. Um, you know, a lot of history that Gemini Twins were under Roy DeMeo. You know, Michael Myers himself. And then switched over to Anthony Gaspite Casso and enough said there. I don't, you don't need a clever nickname for that guy. He was just a killing machine and a piece of shit as well. But anyways, have a happy and safe new year, guys. I will see you next week. Take care. As always, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe, guys. It makes a huge difference. Thank you. I'll see you next week.